Welcome to today's webinar. The topic today is fire resistance design of timber structures in RFM6. My name is Andreas Hörold. I'm responsible for marketing and public relations in the company Bluba Software. For instance, the content of the website, the German and English webinars, newsletters, customer projects, and so on. I will be the moderator today and I will answer questions together with Bastian Kuhn. The presentation will be done by Gerhard Rehm. Gerhard and Bastian are the main responsible persons for the develop, development of the add-on timber design. Uh, and we are working also in the customer support. Okay, then I say some words how you can ask questions. Before I do that, I switch off my webcam that you can see the full screen. You can click on that question mark above, then you can enter your question here, press send, and uh, then we will receive your question and we will answer you. Okay, that should be all from my side. I hand over to Gerhard Rehm. Gerhard, it's your turn. Okay, thank you, Andreas, for the introduction. The content of today's webinar is um, yeah displayed here on the slide. Um, yeah, we have a huge part today because of theory. We talk about the analysis method in case of fire design for timber structures. Um, yeah, mostly this part is really weak in um, in our other webinars. So, but today I thought about to spend a bigger focus on, on the theory. Um, we will not model anything today. We will um, switch to the program and I will show you the, yeah, the settings directly in the program. But the main focus today is, uh, yeah, the theory that you will understand what is the background of the Eurocode. How does everything works with the with the, with the charring and with with the design afterwards? Yeah. So we start with theory, then we switch over into the program. We check a few members. We check the design of surfaces, and at the end we will yeah design cross laminated timber for fire design. Okay. So the first topic today is about the general requirements. So this content here comes from the uh, Bavarian building regulations. And I am sure it is similar in your country. It does not make sense to have a yeah, more detailed look into any regulations because we have so many people here from so many countries and every country is a bit different but i guess in general this sentence says everything so that's why i read it buildings must be arranged constructed modified and maintained in such a way that the outbreak of fire and the spread of fire and smoke are prevented and that in the event of fire the rescue of people and animals and effective firefighting operations are possible and i guess this is clear to i guess everyone um yeah, that this is our yeah big aim. Okay, so then we need to talk about stages of fire. So the first stage is the non-flaming smoldering. Before it goes over to the developing fire stage, then yeah, we get the flash over uh, where we receive the fully developed fire before it comes to the decay stage. And of course, when we think about this red curve here, <laughs> you can imagine that this is hard to simulate yeah, in a, in a structural, structural analysis. Um, that's why we need a simplification. And how this simplification looks like, you will see in the next slide. It's the content of the Eurocode 1, of course, not the whole content, but the important content, it's about nominal temperature time curves. Here we see the standard temperature time curve. There are 
a few more temperature time curves, but for timber and especially for buildings, um, only the standard temperature time curve is from interest. That's why it's only listed. Um, yeah, we see this equation of the time curve. It's a uh, yeah, logarithmic function and the variable is t. <coughs> Next slide is about thermal decomposition of wood. Um, I guess it's clear to everyone that in the beginning it or the wood begins to dry. So this is up to 100 degrees Celsius. From 150 degrees Celsius, the decomposition process begins. So we are around here. And it has its peak at around 270 degrees Celsius where the cellulose um, decomposes and the formation of a char layer begins. And this char layer plays an important role and it's actually the key for our yeah, timber design. That's why it's in bold letters. A few properties of this char layer. This char layer has a lower thermal conductivity than unburned wood. That's why it delays the charring and yeah hopefully a residual cross section remains um yeah and that's the reason why <laughs> we have a very favorable behavior during fire in case of timber as you see here when you check the cross section after a few minutes i don't know how many minutes these are maybe 60 30 or 60 you will see that the timber inside is brand new. It's still brand new. Yeah. Fire resistance classes. So I don't want to spend so much time on it since I guess that's clear to everyone. We have these classifications. Uh, we have um, load bearing components and non load bearing components. But of course, we are focusing, of course, on the load bearing components in our structural analysis and yeah we need to consider integrity or not that depends on of course the building code or yeah whatever in the neuro euro code this yeah plays a more important role and also we are focusing on it in the future but for now we have no integrity um, or we do not prove any integrity since it is actually not a, yeah, a design check like in terms of a structural analysis. But uh, yeah, as I mentioned, it becomes a more important role in the new Euro code. And yeah. Okay, fire retardant, highly fire retardant, fire resistant. I guess that's clear to everyone. We talk about R30, R60, or R90, or R120, and so on. The indexes here are described on the next slides. Um, yeah, I don't want to spend much time here. Um, please check the video afterwards and pause it. You will, or you will be able to read it in detail. Uh, what we're talking about today, we're focusing only on the load bearing capacity. Okay, so now let's start actually with the structural analysis part um, combination rules for actions. So we need to know which loads we can or we have to consider in case of fire design. In this case, we have to look into Eurocode 1, which refers to Eurocode 0, chapter 6433. And yeah, this is nothing else than the, than the extraordinary design situations. There's a small error here. Sorry, it should be or and not the German word oder. I'm sorry for that. I forgot to replace it. Um, yeah, so it's without any partial safety factors you see it here not for the that load and also not for the variable loads and yeah there's only the question if you have to use c1 or c2 for the leading variable action 
but this information you should become from the respective national annex of your country. Okay, so there's also this simplification where you use the internal forces or the actions from the normal temperature design multiplied by some factor and you can design with this internal forces but I do not recommend to use the simplification since it is mostly much or way too uneconomic. All right. Next slide is about strength and stiffness as in case of fire. I guess you know this characteristic strength FK, FMK or FCK and so on, FTK. And this value is actually the 5% quantile value. In case of fire, we can use the 20% quantile value. So that means 20% of the values are lower and 80% of the values are higher than the characteristic values. Um, yeah, fortunately, there is no additional value in the material standards. Fortunately, they used this conversion factor K fire, which uh, yeah, helps us to keep the database as small as possible. And um, yeah. You see, the 20% quantile value is dependent on the material. It depends on, um, yeah, on the scatter of the material properties because it varies greatly compared from solid timber to glue lamp, for example. And I guess it's clear that the properties, yeah, scatter because of branches and whatever cracks. Okay, um, that's it. Let's have a look on this residual cross section. Of course, when we check it here, let me check again this picture, we see the residual cross section, but the question is only how we get this, how we get this effective cross section. And um, yeah, the Eurocode 5 fortunately provides us charring rates for timber materials. And yeah, it's clear that a residual cross section should remain, otherwise, the whole design would not work or the whole building will not uh, will collapse. And the question is only how this residual cross section is defined, and it's simply defined by the cross section where the temperature or the area where the temperature does not exceed 300 degrees Celsius. Then we need to talk about charring rates. We have two types of charring rates. So we have the one dimensional charring rate, beta zero, which is used for surfaces in terms of RFM. And we have the notional design charring rate, beta n, which is actually for members. Let's have a look on table 3.1 according to Eurocode 5. Here you will find the information about the charring rate beta 0 and beta n. For glue lamp, for example, it's 0 0.65 and beta n is 0 0.7. All right, so and the difference here, or actually the ratio you can see, is much higher for solid timber than for glue lamp. And of course, the reason is because solid timber have or has a yeah, much rough surface or also cracks plays an important role and that's why this um, this uh, yeah, ratio is much higher than for glue lamp. Yeah. So the one dimensional charring rate or charring depth can be calculated by multiplying the charring rate by the time. Also for the nominal or notional um, charring rate we multiply the charring rate beta by the time. And yeah, you see it's all about these corners here. When there is a fire, of course, there is no perfect sharp corner. You always have these roundings. Of course, it is hard to consider these roundings or what means hard, it is uh, time consuming to consider these roundings for timber design. That's why 
they have simplified it yeah and that's why we have this beta zero and beta n uh, charring rate okay then we need to talk about um, yeah design methods and the Eurocode 5 provides us two different design methods the reduced cross-section this uh, method or the reduced properties method both are described in chapter 4.2 of course, both have advantages and disadvantages. So the advantage of the cross section of the reduced cross section method is it's um, it's uh, applicable for any cross sectional shape and material, and the disadvantages is this method is a bit less economical than the reduced properties method, which is the advantage, of course, of the reduced properties method that it's more economical. But it has an disadvantage, of course. It's only valid for circular softwood materials and also only for rectangular cross sections for three or four sided charring of softwood as well. In our software, or actually, the reduced section method can be used only when we talk about surface design. Yeah, For example, for CLT, the reduced cross section method needs to be used. In our program we consider only the reduced cross-section method but maybe in the future I'm thinking about maybe to also introduce the reduced property method since the amount of work is not so high so I'm thinking about to also overtake the reduced property method for the member design. Okay let's have a detailed look on the different design methods. Here we see the reduced cross-section method. Um, of course, we have the initial, initial surface of the member and it's getting reduced to the residual cross-section by the charring rate multiplied by the time, which we have here. And since the area between the green and the yellow line here has also an increased temperature already, and therefore a reduced strength and reduced stiffness, this area should also be neglected. And that's why we add some additional in times of or in, in yeah, for times higher than the 20 minutes, the factor key zero is one and D zero is seven millimeters. So we add additional seven uh, yeah, we additionally we add seven millimeters to our charring depth. Yeah, when we go to the strengths, we have a K mod fire design, uh, a K mod fire factor, but do not, yeah, interchange it by the K mod factor from the cold state design, um, with, where we um, uh, have, yeah, the K mod factor dependent on the load duration class. In term, in case of fire. The K mod fire factor is always, or for this reduced cross section method, the K mod fire factor is always 1.0. And also the partial safety factor, since it is an extraordinary design situation, it's also 1.0. And therefore, at least at the global Eurocode, maybe there might be some national annexes, I didn't check it, which has higher partial safety factors, but I don't think so. Um, yeah, and then you see this is one. This is one, and therefore the design strength equals the 20% quantile values. Okay, and also for the stiffness. Okay, the reduced property method is actually similar. We have the initial surface of the member, and we have the border of the residual cross section. What we don't have is we do not have this additional 70, seven millimeters. So the yellow line here. Um, that means the effective is the charring depths. But we have to consider a K-mod factor which is smaller than 1.0. And this K-mod factor depends on the perimeter of the fire exposed residual cross section and the area. And this depends on yeah, different the different strengths for bending, compression, tension, 
and that's why maybe makes it a bit harder for us since we have to always fulfill a global um yeah um we have to fulfill how can i say the um a glo the global design for all design checks so there is nothing listed for shear and there's nothing listed for compression perpendicular to the grain um uh, yeah so maybe we need to find a solution to to also uh, introduce this reduced properties method and i have already ideas for it okay um that's it let's do a small example for this ceiling beam which is um, softwood c24 140 by 240 millimeters fire resistance period should be r30 and the charring should be at three sides left right side and the bottom side okay so what we do is we calculate our charring depth multiplying the beta n factor from table 3 1 it's this table solid timber which is c24 we have 0 0.8 and multiplied by the time in this case it's or 30 means 30 minutes we get 24 millimeters and we additionally add 1.0 by 7 millimeters and then we get an effective charring depth of 31 millimeters okay now we take the 31 millimeters two times and reduce it and we get 78 millimeters for the width and also for the height 240 millimeters minus one times 31 millimeters equals 209 millimeters actually it's really simple <laughs> okay then let's switch over to RFM. so i'm sorry maybe i should um Yeah, I'm sorry. I have loaded the wrong files. Because they were already finished and of course I want to start directly when our ULS and SLS design is fulfilled. So we see this floor here. I have showed this floor with different variants in in another webinar, I guess a year ago or something. You will find this webinar also on our website and now of course i want to extend it for fire design and what we will do is we will add an additional design situation because we need our actions in case of fire okay so i added the design situations here and i will add another design situation in this case i select accidental fire Watch out, there is also accidental without fire, but this should be used for, for example, an impact load or something. In case of fire, please use this one here. Um, yeah, it depends on the national annex. In Since uh, we have only impost loads um, uh, and are used to German annex, I will use C2 in this case. Okay, and then we get our load combinations for ULS. Um, cold state and also yeah the fire state where we have impost loads dead load and impost loads on different spans okay of course timber design results needs to be deleted we want to add fire design here all right let's have a look on the floor beams in this case a fire resistance config was automatically assigned to it so in case you don't receive any results for fire design please check if a fire resistance configuration was defined here let's have a look at it okay so there's there are different tabs for members surfaces and some standard parameters so in this case it's exposed to fire on three sides so not the top side and we check it against 30 minutes and when we switch to standard parameters, you will see all these beta factors for different wood and, and for different timber material. Okay, 
and you, you are able to change these values in case of some special settings from some special approval or something. Okay, so that's actually it. So here we can also check which fire resistance config is assigned. So in this case, this config one is assigned to all members and all member sets. Of course, if some member has a different setting, you can simply switch it here in this design configuration tab. And here you can also create new configs. Okay, so that's it. I guess for now I will run the analysis. And then we will check and compare because the floor beams here, the ceiling beams, have exactly the same section like my hand calculation. So we had 78 by 209 millimeters. Okay, so let's focus on, yeah, it does not matter. We don't take care of the numbers for this example. Let's check uh, this member here and we check fire resistance. Let's check bending. And let's have a look at it. So it's not so, <laughs> yes, so interesting. We only see how the characteristic value is transferred into the yeah into the um, 20 percentage quantile value so we increase the strength the characteristic one by factor 1.25 so it's yeah okay it's okay and k okay, mod fire is 1.0 and also the partial safety fire factor is 1.0 here we get the information about the fire resistance so we have a t required of 30 minutes and we have beta n of 0 0.8 millimeter for this material multiplied by 30 minutes equals 24 millimeters we add additionally the 7 millimeters and we get an effective charring depth of 31 millimeters and an effective section of 78 by 209 millimeter which was exactly the same value like in our example here Okay. Um, yeah, let's go directly to the next example. Um, it was this one with surfaces. So there's a small additional building next to other building but the other building was not modeled so i that's why i have this fixed support here on this side there is a line hitch here on this side and there is a support here on the wall on the bottom side um, so this floor here was made of an 80 millimeter glue lamp floor so it's an autotropic material model. So let's have a quick look on it. So I've switched to autotropic linear elastic surfaces where we have a different modulus in X and Y direction. Of course, this is made of multiple pieces of glue lamb. So maybe um, yeah, 80 by 625 millimeters or 620 millimeters or something. And of course, there should be no moment transfer in Y direction of the surface but since we span it directly in one direction, there is no big difference. Uh, of course, if there is another support here, then maybe we should think about to reduce the stiffness in y direction or add some line hinges. But for this example, it's absolutely okay. Um, okay, so what I have done here was I have to find some fire config for surfaces. So we check it. Um, Let's check it against 90 minutes um, to make some extreme example. You can imagine we have 80 millimeters and we expose it to fire for 90 minutes. Yeah, you can imagine what happens. And we want to have the sides or the fire only exposed on the bottom side. So that's all what we enter for now. We come to all other settings later.
OK. So we need also this design situation. I will add a new one here. So in this case, I select this one because wind is also considered here. So we have that load, we have snow load and wind load, and we have a really, yeah, a high that load uh, because um, I have to find 2.5 kilonewton for load case one in this example. Um, okay, let's check it. Yeah, we have load case one, load case two, which is snow, load case three, which is wind, and load case four, which is also wind. Yeah, as I mentioned for the German annex, this load combination can be neglected, but for now I'll leave it. Okay, so that's actually all. Oh, sorry, I forgot to create it. A minute. I, I, I hit the cancel button and not the OK button. That's why it was not saved. Um, yeah, let's use the first one. Okay. Yeah, that's actually all. We focus only on the floor for now. I start the analysis. And then let's check what happens. Yeah, so you maybe have a focus on this diagram here. You see already, yeah, the deformation becomes extremely high. So we are around 1 meter 30, 1 meter 40 deformation. Uh, yeah, and you see there are some errors. And but fortunately, we get some results. But of course, when we check the deformation for this load case, yeah, <laughs> the maximum deformation is one meter sixty. The span of the, of the of the of the floor has only three meters, so it's fifty percent of the span length. And I guess that's clear that no firefighter will <laughs> enter this room when he sees that the floor will deform like this. So yeah, but at least we get results. But watch out, it can happen when you don't take care of it. Of course, it's clear nobody would apply ninety minutes uh, to an eighty millimeter panel. Um, so it can happen that the structure becomes unstable, especially when we talk about um, P delta analysis, so second order effects. Yeah, then of course the critical load factor plays an important role, and of course the structure becomes unstable under some circumstances. This needs to be considered. Okay, so in this case it's clear this floor will definitely not work, and when we check the ratios here. You see directly, okay, the ratio is extremely high. Um, let's check it directly. Uh, we will see, okay, we have the charring depth here calculated and the remaining thickness of the surface is 14.5 millimeters. You can enter and see each um, intermediate value here in this dialog. But there's also this uh, diagram here on top or also when you close it and click here. And then you will see, let's switch to the stresses. You will see, okay, we had the 80 millimeter and the remaining thickness, the effective thickness is only 14.5 millimeters, which is of course too low. And the charring depth here can be seen by 65.5 millimeters. And now it's the question, how we can fix this. Of course, we can increase here the thickness of the surface, but there is another way what we can consider. So let's go back to our PowerPoint. And now we talk about initially protected components. As you can see, this is, I guess, the most or most common case to cover it by some chips and boards. Um, yeah. The advantage in this case is we save time. Yeah. Because the, yeah, the chips and boards in this case or all other claddings, yeah, they cause some delay. Yeah. So the timber will start to burn much later than without this cladding. Um, of course, it depends always on yeah, if if the quality of the timber should be should be visible or not visible. That's clear. But 
in case it's not visible, then uh, yeah, we can apply such claddings. Um, the Euroco describes different stages of uh, or different stages or phases of of fire, and we will have a look on it in detail now. Okay, maybe you have seen similar diagrams like this. So let's have a look on this diagram. So curve one is the charring rate for the unprotected surface. So that means we have a linear charring rate. Um, it's nothing else than actually in this case here, that's the charring depth. It's nothing else than um, beta zero multiplied by the time. And of course, it is linear. Okay, and of course, the timber starts to burn exactly at t equals zero. And now we come to this delay, yeah, when we use some, yeah, some, um, some protection. And here we see two different curves. So we see curve two and curve three. We will talk about both curves in, t in detail on the next slides. Um, here you see the time of the delay of charring to, to production equals the failing the failure time of protection. That means the, the protection will fall down from the floor, for example, at the same time the fire starts. Yeah, on, on the timber. And the second curve is um, the the protection is still active, it's still on the floor, for example, but behind the, um, the protection, there is already, um, there is already, uh, um, yeah, that the fire, the fire at the, at the, behind the, the protection has started already, yeah, but the protection is still on the floor. So, and in this case, we can consider a reduced charring rate until it will fail. Yeah, and after the protection is gone, you, we will have some increased charring rate again. Um, you, you see here, we have this 25 millimeters limit, and after this 25 millimeters, the normal charring rate will continue. Um, yeah, and that's the time TA, and this time, uh, yeah, or this this T is actually the time in minutes uh, from which a char layer with a thickness of 25 millimeter is present, and yeah, no increase in the burn rate needs to be applied anymore. Okay, let's have a look on it in detail. Okay, so for wood-based panels. Chips and plasterboards type A and H, we can con we can yeah use this curve number two, where T charring equals the failing time of the protection. Yeah, for wood, it's simple. We can simply divide the panel thickness by the charring rate, and then we know the time. Yeah, for the I guess most common case. Using gypsum plasterboards, we have equations in the Eurocode for fill joints or gaps smaller than two millimeters or for gaps higher than two millimeters. So for a typical 12.5 millimeter plasterboard, yeah, the time, the charring time here is um, 21 millimeters. So the delay the fire will start 20 minutes later. Yeah. So, but as you can see here, we have an increased charring rate afterwards. So at the end, I guess this was, I'm not sure it was 60 minutes at the end with this time, we don't save much time because here we can consider a linear curve and here it's bilinear. So we have an increased charring rate here. Um, the, yeah. You see, you see here the charring depths for part 2a, and here we see this factor k3, which is 2. And the reason why we have to consider an increased charring depth is nothing else than the temperature, 
ja, next uh, behind the, the protection is in, is already really high and of course the timber dries out yeah so and of course the dry, dry timber is is burning much faster than than wet timber that's clear i guess and that's why we have to consider this increasing uh, charring rate and the time where this uh, where this um, char layer becomes it's 25 millimeters can be also calculated by this equation which is also listed in the standard in the Eurocode 5 part 1 2 okay um, so we need this time we need this time and we know this time ta and t charring and therefore we can calculate our charring depth by adding charring depths to a plus to b Okay, so what we also need to consider, there is also a minimum penetration length because of the fasteners. So in case T charring equals TF, we have to add 10 millimeters to the, <coughs> to the protection thickness. That's clear because we don't have to add any charring depths here in this equation because the timber is not burning. Yeah at this time it is different here when tf becomes higher than t charring that's the case for gypsum plasterboards type f and gypsum fiberboards same equation like for the other slides so i don't spend time on this but yeah the big unknown is this time here so the time of the failure of the protection and eurocode 5 does not say anything about it okay it says something in annex c yeah to get the values from tests of course this will not help us engineers so in this case we have to look in other approvals or in other codes for example the ÖNorm from austria they provide values for type F. Yeah. So in this case, for one layer, um, yeah, it's 2.2 by, for example, 12.5 millimeters plus 4 equals 31.5 minutes. So compared to 21, we will have an additional reduced charring rate for additional um, 31.5 minus 21 minutes. Or maybe also in the new Eurocode generation, there will be values for it. In this case, this equation um, results in 30.2, point, uh, 30, 32.5 minutes. Um, yeah, it's a minute longer than the Enorm approach, but at least we get some values. Okay, or also have a look on yeah, the approval, for example, here at Storenzo, they provide values for 55 minutes, so 20 minutes longer or more than 20 minutes longer than the other approaches. So this will help you, of course, a lot. But of course, the gravity takes an important role and therefore there is the distinguish between walls and floors. Um, Let's have a detailed look. There's also this equation about the, um, yeah, about the 25 millimeter of the char layer and also the charring depths for 3A, 3B, and 3C. Oh, sorry, that's a small mistake. It should be 3C. Um, yeah, K2 is the reduction factor for this part. For classical 12.5 millimeter gypsum board, it's 0 0.775. Yeah, then we increase the strengths here again because of the temperature and the tried timber by factor 2. And here at 25 millimeters, we start again with a normal charring rate from table 3.1. And here, additionally, we have to add yeah, the charring depth at this time when the 
when the um, protection will fail. Okay. Um, yeah, next slide is already about CLT. Let's switch back to our program. So we will go to the fire resistance configuration again and go to surfaces. And here I will activate the initial fire protection from bottom side. As you can see, it this is the default, or these are the default values. Um, default values value here is 21 minutes, which is the yeah is the result from uh, yeah from 12.5 millimeter gypsum plaster board. K2 value yeah it's 0 0.775. Uh, in this case, let's start with TF equal T charring, and this increasing factor K3 should be considered with 2.0. So, okay, we need to recalculate everything. As you saw, also the internal forces and the results from the load combination for the accidental actions got deleted because we sent the reduced section to the solver. So all the stiffness is considered with a reduced st uh, stiffness for surfaces. Okay, when we run the analysis again, before we had a effective section of 14.5 or 14.8 millimeter, deformation was at 1 meter 60. Now we, yeah, get a deformation of around 1 meter 30 or 1 meter or something, a ratio of 280%, of course, still too high. Let's check the thickness. Okay, yeah, we won 1 or 1.5 millimeters, so not really much. Okay, let's go here to surfaces again, and maybe let's try the value from Önorm or from the global Eurocode. Let's switch to 30.1, 31.5 millimeters. But sorry, my mistake, it was for the walls. In this case, yeah, we should consider here. Um, the floor, in this case, may be better to use um, two-layered. So this is this uh, cell here. Uh, it's 1.4 multiplied by 2 by 12.5 millimeters plus 4. Yeah, becomes 39 minutes. Okay, so maybe better directly to use 39 minutes here. And then let's see how far we can go and maybe we come close to the 100% ratio. Okay, the deformation is at yeah, 30 centimeters, which is not too bad in case of fire, and the ratio is close to 100%, so yeah, it's 1.31. Since we have already two layers of, of gypsum board on it, maybe yeah, it's worth to think about to increase the thickness of timber bit in this case maybe or i'm nearly sure 100 millimeter uh, the increase of 100 millimeter blue lamp will be enough in this example but okay that's uh that's that's okay for now um time is running quick maybe switch over directly to the slides and have a look on clt which has some special rules um before I start with CLT, as you know, it's not directly regulated in the global euro code, in the current euro code. It is uh, covered in a few annexes like the German and the Austrian one. But this timber design is, uh, yeah, is, is not part of any annex. Um, so this is actually the the current state of, of the technique and um, about, yeah, it's, it will be also part of the new Euro code and it is also already in some approvals from producers. So, for example, Stora Enso, they use this approach and also a few others. Okay, so first we talk about linear charring. That's nothing else than our solid timber. So, same rules. The only additional rule is for CLT and linear charring layers smaller than three millimeters should not be considered anymore in the design because 
the charring is of course not perfect perfect symmetric over the over the um the whole surface um and that's why it's better to to neglect um layer thicknesses smaller than three millimeters and the linear charring can be used only for heat proof adhesive um, mostly this is not the case for clt so i don't know any producer maybe there are producers which uses um, heat proof adhesive um, but uh, it is more common to use um, non-heat adhesive like the polyurethane adhesives in this case we need to consider a non-linear charring because the temperature influence on adhesive causes delamination yeah um, let's have a look on this image here you will see this is a clt floor you see the longitudinal layers and the transversal layers here and yeah you see this coal or this um, char layer which helps us actually to reduce the fire is completely gone within a second yeah it is there then it falls down and then there is no protection and uh, yeah the, the, the timber is uh, the t temperature in the timber is really high it's really dry and you can imagine there is additional increase in charring rate yeah in uh yeah similar actually to the initial protected components there we use the same approach and you will see on the next slide um this is this yeah this um this stair model sometimes called uh where we have different areas as well so the first area is here a here we consider a normal charring rate with beta zero the most approvals use 0 0.65 millimeters but per minute but or other approvals maybe they use 0 0.7 it depends always on the approvals um yeah so the first area is uh, 0 0.65 millimeters for example per minute and then we come to the second layer so let's assume okay the layer falls down so the timber behind is already threatened with a high temperature that means we get an additional increased charring rate in this case we call it beta k beta so it's also factor two similar to the um, initial um, let's switch to this slide to this one yeah to this initial protected components and uh here we go then when the char layer actually reaches 25 millimeters we can continue with the normal charring rate and then it starts from the scratch so from here again and so on and so on but of course this is 120 millimeters and you see for 0 0.65 millimeters we get an effective thickness or we get an, an, an charring depths an effective charring depths of around oh, let's say 100 110 millimeters or something yeah let's have a look let's have a look on it in detail afterward okay also the three millimeters should not be taken into account Yeah, and this is for roofs and ceilings. Um, for walls, of course, here the gravity plays an important role. That I guess that's clear. For walls, yeah, gravity plays a role when it falls to the side, for example. Uh, here we also have a bilinear curve, but we do not have um, such a high increased burning uh, charring rate. So the first layer will be yeah, burned by 0 0.65 millimeters per minute, for example, and the second and all following layers get a, becomes a charring rate of 0 0.86 millimeters per minute. 
um, yeah, in a few in, in a few approvals, this value here and also in literature is recommended to use. Also, three millimeters should not be taken into account. That's clear. Um, let's have a look into the program again. So I will replace this layer by layer number two. I have prepared it already. It's a five-layered Stora Enso composition with 30, 20, 20, 20, 30 millimeters. Um, the span direction can be checked here with these blue arrows. You will find them in the display navigator, surfaces, layer direction, and I display the resultant. Of course, you are able to also add per layer and with indices, and then you will see directly about the layer direction. But for this example, I prefer to see the resultant stiffness direction. Um, okay, um, maybe let's leave also the settings directly like we had before. Yeah, we can leave it and run the analysis again. And let's see the differences between the CLT and uh, the softwood or solid timber. Okay, deformation was not really high, it was around 120 millimeter. Let's have a look on the ratios. Oh, let's check the ratios for, let's say, higher than 20%, and we get a smarter overview about ULS design is 20%, SLS around 31%, and fire design, yeah, will control in this case um, with a ratio of 79%. And let's have a look on it in detail. So we check the charring depths and we get the information directly. Okay, layer number five fails, number four fails, layer number three fails, and layer number two will be reduced to 12.6 millimeters. Um, of course, it's much easier and much nicer to see the the uh, effective section here in this dialog. Maybe switch to stresses again. Yeah, you will see 77.4 millimeters will fail and 30 millimeters on top, of course, will remain. And on the second layer, 12.6 millimeter will remain. But of course, since this is the transversal layer, this uh, layer is not able to, to support the first layer. That's why the stresses are only considered on the top layer. Yeah. And this helps us, of course, a lot to understand um, the affective section. But, of course, I agree, yeah, the charring rate, um, to check the charring rate, in, uh, rate inside the tables, it's sometimes a bit tricky. And, and, of course, you can check each value, each intermediate value, that's clear. But, of course, it would be much smarter to see it graphically. And that's why we have introduced, or we are introducing now, uh, will be finished in a few weeks, um, this um, time course monitor where you can see the charring depth over the time. And this helps you yeah, a lot to understand and compare it with my slides in the PowerPoint presentation. So, for example, here on the right side, that's a floor, and um, we see here the border of the residual cross section and we add of course the seven millimeters here that's covered by this red line so we have a protection you can see here because the burning starts at 21 minutes in this example and um, yeah then we have the double charring rate then the, we reach the 25 millimeter limit then we have the normal charring rate again and then from this beginning double charring rate until we reach the 40 plus 25 equals 65 millimeters, and then we continue with the normal one again. On the left side, we see a wall. Here on this side, it's not covered with the protection, 
on the bottom side we see a protection so it starts at time zero and yeah the charring rate or the charring depths uh, increase for the first layer linearly but by this charring rate of 0 0.65 millimeters and from the second layer on we get this increased charring uh, charring uh, rate um on the bottom side we see okay a protection and here it's the same yeah we start with the increased charring rate until we reach the first or the second layer and then we continue with this 0 0.86 millimeter or whatever you have to find in the fire design config so here you will see for cross laminated timber and dependent on if you have heat proof adhesive or non heat proof oh i forgot to show you here in this surface dialog you will find the distinction between wall and ceiling um, when you select ceiling then this approach here will be used and when you select wall this approach will be used of course the program does not know if this is a wall or a floor this needs to be a user input and yeah dependent on the setting here you will get this um, you will get this settings you can also define the thickness the limit of three millimeters when you want to consider it of course you can enter zero here or a higher value and also there's the option to define a user defined coefficient of layer thickness with zero strengths so of course it's 1.0.7 in the most cases if you want to consider higher factors you can use it here all right yeah that's it for the floor and yeah time is already over but i will show you the wall configuration so you need to create a new fire config so i create a new one for surfaces you will you can switch over to wall in this case um yeah define your your required time and your settings if it's exposed on top or bottom side top is always minus c direction and bottom is always plus c direction so when you right click on the surface um, you can activate the local access systems here and then you see okay plus is in plus direction and minus is in minus direction yeah and don't forget to um, wait a minute i forgot it i will switch over to wall or i can maybe i don't want to create a new one i want to create a copy and um, i will switch to wall okay and now i have assigned the wall config yeah to my wall okay so for now um that's it from my side um I'm thinking about to do another webinar on this, especially when we talk about wall design, especially when we talk about backlink design of CLT. Um, we had already a webinar about backlink design of CLT um, in RFM5, which can be overtaken actually to, to RFM6, but yeah, maybe in the future um, I plan to do a webinar where I show also yeah, the eccentric effects and the buckling effects on this on this walls for example okay yeah so as you saw it was really focused on this powerpoint but uh yeah i want to uh, i was focused on on this all this information to to provide also uh to following users to to watch the webinars and uh yeah to learn about this fire resistance this helps the user of course 24 7 and of course this helps us in the hotline where we don't have to answer the questions because of course you um yeah can check it out in this uh in this webinar and hopefully i fulfilled your expect expectations and yeah that's it for now hopefully i don't I did not forget anything. Oh, maybe, yeah, some words on literature, com recommendations. 
Unfortunately, I'm not familiar with some English um, um, literature, so I know only the German ones because the German ones are already really good. I'm sure there are English literatures, but uh, yeah, I have no clue about. <laughs> um, yeah, maybe you can send me some English literature sources, and then I I can add it to this PowerPoint later. Okay. Then I want to thank you for your time and yeah, see you soon, hopefully. <laughs> I will hand over to Andreas again. Thank you and goodbye. Thank you, Gerhard, for this nice presentation. An additional hint from my side, just book your free online appointment, such as a product demonstration of our main programs, RFEM, RSTAP, our wind, our section, or yeah, a, a demonstration of our add-ons, or of one or two or more of our add-ons. Just contact our sales team by clicking that link here, or you can scan the QR code. You will find the presentation slides on the same website uh, where you can find the recording. And the next days you will get an email uh, with a link to the website with the recording and the slides. Okay, it should be also all from my side. Thank you for your attention. Thanks to Gerhard for this presentation. Thanks to Bastian for his support by answering the questions. I hope we meet each other in a future webinar. Yeah, have a nice rest of the day. Bye-bye.